All right. Well, I think I'm live and it's not quite five. 459. Hopefully everybody had had a great day today. Uh, if you're out there on the West Coast, then uh, you're still in your day. Uh, but ours on the East Coast has come to an end. I'm still drinking coffee because I was focused mainly on trying to get the technology uh, more so than anything else. So we are going to do a calculation today on short circuit currents using the per unit method. I've got, uh, I've got some, uh, I've got, I bought another camera for this uh, little episode and hopefully moving forward, I'll be doing some more calculations. So let's just see how this looks. So there's my, uh, see that? I got my hands up here and, um, this is our little one line diagram and I'm going to use, uh, magic markers. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everybody will be able to see it. Uh, you won't be looking at this. You'll be looking at something like this. So I'll use, uh, I'll use my Sharpies. Uh, I've got, I don't, I was foraging through the house the other day looking for some uh, good Sharpies because the, the new ones have the better felt tips. So anyway, put that aside, we're going to talk about available fault currents. Um, don't forget to subscribe uh, to the channel, please. Uh, you know, hit the thumbs up or the thumbs down. I don't care. Whatever you, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, in any case, um, welcome to Thursday at five, and um, we're going to uh, we're going to talk about short circuit currents. We're going to do this one line diagram right here, and I hope that I hope that everybody had a chance. Hey, we got Gustavo. All right, math is looking good, and and I'll, I'm, I'm going to suggest I'm using a TI. Oh, not a TI. I'm using an HP 35S scientific calculator. That's what I'm using. And I'll tell you um, what, what is going to be important here is um, being able to do, uh, do what do they call it? They call it, it's polar. And then there's an imaginary number, an I on here. So I'm not good. I'm going to have my uh, my 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 calculator over here. You'll be able to see it, but I don't know if you'll be able to see the digits I'm pressing. Um, but I'm going to leverage this when we're using complex math because uh, it's just easier. But I will show you how it's done um, as we as we go through uh, the program. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, complex variables. Hey, we got Joe Bellantoni. We got Gustavo. We got Tomas. Vamos a ver otro video. Como esta? <laughs> Muy bien. All right. So, um, so anyway, so we are going to take this um, one line diagram and we're going to do a short circuit study by hand using uh, per unit as, as discussed earlier. And uh, hopefully my audio is not coming too, too loud, but I'm excited. So I am uh, sort of, you know, energetic here. So, Anyway, we're going to do we're we're going to calculate our fault currents. I have not uh, done this yet. I've done some uh, preliminary stuff, but um, this is this is raw. So I was focused on my camera, and uh, I've been doing some homework to because I think our discussion for some of these components here, like transformers and motors, we're going to be talking about equivalent impedances. So, and I am. Got to mute my phone. All right. So the first step in what we're going to do with this one line diagram and doing a short circuit study, an important component A is the one line diagram. It has to be accurate. In, in a lot of cases, uh, we are going to be starting this study based upon no actual equipment in the field. So think about yourself quoting a job or putting together a project. You're going to need to figure out uh, available fault currents uh, and run some studies. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about some assumptions as well. 
Uh, so we're going to have to convert this one line diagram into an impedance diagram. Now, what you're seeing here is what I will do as an equivalent impedance diagram. You'll notice the motor. I uh, the motor is typically what it's it's. This is the way we represent it on a one line diagram as you know as a downstream device, just like the transformer and, and hier hierarchically uh, going down uh, further from the source. But when we create an impedance diagram, that motor uh, is in parallel uh, with everything from that bus up to the utility. That's how we model mathematically the uh, motor contribution. If that motor was connected to bus B, then I would put an impedance from bus B all the way up to that utility and that motor would be in parallel with everything in the uh, power distribution system. It wouldn't go from bus B to bus A. It would go from bus B all the ways up. And I don't know if I can do that. I mean, you know what we'll do here. Let's uh, let's do this. And I got I got new technology, so I bought another camera. So um, so if uh, if we were going, we're going to take and we're going to make an impedance diagram. This is sort of our one line diagram that that we have, right? So we have the utility up here. We've got the conductor one. Now I don't have the overcurrent protected devices in here because I really don't care about the overcurrent protected devices. Remember, we're going to have to figure out what uh, impedances go into the system. We don't put the impedance of a circuit breaker or a fuse. We don't put the impedance of um, of the uh, of the bus inside of a panel board or a switchboard. Uh, we model the big boys, you know, conductors, transformers, motors, generators. Uh, if you have line reactors in there, which you're using to maybe knock down fault currents and things like that, um, we will model those. Those are significant impedances. Impedances of a bus work, you know, the heavy copper bus that you would have inside of a panel board, switch board, switch gear is um, is insignificant. And I think what you'd have to do is make sure that um, you could you could try to model it. You could put the impedances in and run the analysis and you, you'll see it does not have a very large impact of available fault currents. Because remember, we want to be in the ballpark and we're and we're going to be conservative in our assumptions to get a maximum available fault current. Uh, now, if I'm doing an arc flash study, I'm gonna to wanna to do a maximum available fault current, and I'm gonna to wanna to do a minimum available fault current. And we'll talk about some of those assumptions as we move along. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create an impedance diagram. So, uh, how do I do that? We have the utility. We have conductor one, we have transformer one, we have conductor two, we have conductor three, we have transformer two, and then we have conductor four, okay? Now, uh, remember, we've got the motor that we have to, um, that we have to put into our impedance diagram. And that motor is not gonna be drawn down. Uh, remember where it's at, it's right after C2 and right before conductor three, that's bus A. So this my is bus A. And what we'll do is draw an impedance up and this is motor one. Uh, where's bus B? This is bus B. So we have our one line diagram over here without the circuit breakers or fuses. And we have our impedance diagram over here. And in every one of these boxes, we're going to have to create an impedance in per unit. And we're going to talk about what per unit is and how I'm going to do that is as I uh, as I put each of these into their uh, per unit values, we will do the math and uh, I will help you understand uh, as we move along, right? So uh, before we go on to anywhere else, what I do want to do is when we think about per unit, 
and I know everybody's been doing reading because I, I, I this idea to do this came up last week when I got a question uh, about my uh, infinite bus. And I have a video on my YouTube channel that talks about infinite bus. We're going to run these numbers and we'll, we can do a comparison uh, based upon infinite bus. So we can get rid of that utility and put an infinite bus and I'll show you how we change our impedance diagram for that. And we can compare some numbers because once we have the impedance diagram completed, um, we'll be able to do play around with some numbers. So, uh, but this was a spur of the moment thing. But I know since I put it up there on Saturday, you guys in, uh, have been researching per unit. And you'll know that when, I, when I'm doing a per unit uh, evaluation of a, 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 for a power distribution system, I'm going to assume a KVA uh, base value. And if you look in some books, they'll tell you pick an MVA base of some number or pick a, you know, uh, one MVA and do everything with, with, with respect or regard to one MVA of a base KVA. But my recommendation is that you should pick the KVA of one of your transformers and base and make that your KVA base for the entire project. And the reason I say that is because it's going to reduce at least one level of calculations uh, in your system. So we know, I, and I told everybody earlier that 1500 KVA is going to be my selected base value. You can pick any KVA base you want, but you're gonna to have to modify anything that I do. Now, the other thing that you, uh, tilt iPhone sideways, scientific calculator. Yes, you're right. If you uh, tilt your, okay, perfect. Glad, glad you said that, Bill. Uh, and and I've not done that on my phone yet, but uh, once we get into complex math, uh, you're gonna be have to do the A tangent function. You're gonna have to do the um, inverse tangent and then polar coordinates. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. Let's work back to per unit. I got sidetracked. I, I, they call that uh, ADHD. So the first thing, we, we're gonna have a common KVA base for the entire project, but because we have transformers, our voltage, our voltages are going to change. So our base voltage values will change, which if I have a, if I have a, a consistent KVA and I'm changing voltages, that means my I base, my current base is going to change. And so will my, my Z base because Y, V is equal to IR. And uh, R is equal to V over I. So if I'm changing my voltage and I'm changing my currents, then my Z is going to change. And, and, and you'll understand the importance of that as we go along. The first thing though, and, and I always used to screw this up, I would recommend you establish zones. So in zone A, remember our KVA base, I, gotta find, I, I found a new Sharpie and it has a pointier this is it. So my KVA base, you can see that. My KVA base is 1500, and that's gonna be the same for every zone. KVA base, right? 1500 KVA for each of these zones, regardless of the voltages. This is my base. And what I have to do now is calculate all of my base values uh, off of this and my voltage. My V base on this side is 4160, right? Because my transformer T1, I have 4160 to 480. So that means the V base in this zone is 480. And the V base in this zone is 208. Make sense? Okay, those are given. I elected to use K 1500 KVA, but the voltages are given to me. Now what I have to do is calculate I base for each of these locations and Z base. Okay, now, to calculate I base, I need talking paper. And you know what we use for talking paper? I don't know if there's any uh, anybody out there 
who, um, who doesn't want to kill trees, you're not going to like my talking paper or concept. Now, for each of these locations, what's my equation to calculate my base current? So I base is equal to KVA base divided by 3, multiply the square root of 3, divide that by um, KV. Right, and the reason I do the square root of three and three, I mean, if you've watched any of my videos, you understand. Um, I put the divide by three to get it to a single phase KVA. And then because my KV is in three phase, my 4160, I throw that square root of three up. But you've probably been more familiar with seeing this as that, right? Square root of three divided by KV. And we got Lou Grayhor in the house. Thanks for joining, Lou. All right, so we're going to calculate I base. 1,500 divided by the square root of 3 divided by 4.16. So that's another <laughs> word of advice. Be, be mindful of the K, uh, because if you did 4160, um, yeah, don't kill trees, use SKM retap. But Ron, our goal here is to understand what SKM and ETAP are doing. So uh, we are going to, we're going to run through this manually and then we're going to, I'm going to open up SKM. We're going to put this one line diagram in together and we're going to run our numbers and see if we are on, on cue. And hopefully I don't screw it up. And then when we do that, we find out that I was, I did something wrong in math. So I'm going to need you guys to check me. So let's do the math on this one. Uh, 1500, 1500, enter, 3 square root divide, and I'm going to be very deliberate, 4.16 divide is 208.18, 208.18, 208.18 amps, all right, now, how do I get Z base, well, what do we know? We know V is equal to IR. R is equal to V over I, right? I know voltage and I know current. So to get Z base is equal to 4,160 volts. I got to divide that by the square root of three to get the single phase. And then I have to divide that by 208.18. And let's do that. And you, I know all of you are doing this too, right? So 4,160, three square root, divide. 4,160, <laughs> three square root, divide. 208.18, divide. That's 11.537. 11.537. 537. So Z base is 11.537. Make sense? Now I'm going to do the same math for this level and this level, but I'm not going to write it out. You already saw that. So I'm just going to talk it out because I want you to make sure I'm doing this right. And you can see my, uh, my calculator, hopefully. All right, so 1,500, three square root divide, 0.48, not 480, but 0.48 divide, 1804.22, 1804.22. Now, I will say, when we compare our numbers with SKM, the decimal points that we take this out to will impact our accuracy. SKM is going to be taking it out to the whatever decimal point. So we're going to have an error just based on that. Uh, all right, so my Z base is 1804. Nope. 
is uh, 480. Remember, uh, Z base is voltage divided by square root of three, line to line voltage divided by square root of three divided by the current. So 480, nope, yeah, 480, three square root divide, 1804.22 divide, 0.1536. Zero point one five three six ohms, and I'm going to do the same thing here. Fifteen hundred. Enter three square root divide. Point two zero eight divide. Four thousand one hundred and sixty three point five eight. Four thousand one hundred sixty three. Point five eight. My Z base is what is my Z base? Voltage over current. So two o eight three phase. Divide that by the square root of three to get it to single phase. Divide and divide that by four thousand one hundred and sixty three point five eight point zero two eight eight. Zero two eight eight ohms. Okay, those are some critical numbers. I think I have a wrong pen. Those are critical numbers. Why? I'm going to be using I base and I, whenever I calculate my per unit current, remember that per unit equals actual over base, right? So if I have, if I want to find actual base times per unit equals actual, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate, eventually I'm going to get to uh, calculate a per unit value of current. I'm going to mod uh, multiply that by my base currents that I've calculated in each of these zones, and that's going to give me my actual. And what per unit will let me do, I'm basically normalizing, I'm putting everything as, as a percent of a number so that I can add the conductor one impedance with conductor two impedance with the transformer impedance with conductor three with transformer two and conductor four. I can just add those together in a series circuit. If I didn't do that, the impedance of conductor two is based upon the voltage of 480. Conductor one is, a, is an impedance, but it's at a different voltage level. Remember what a transformer does for me. Uh, about the transposition. So I, if for me to, re I would have to, if I did this in ohms, I'd have to reflect all of my impedances to one area on at one voltage, add them up and then calculate current and then start reflecting currents. And it becomes very complicated if you have a large power distribution system. So your best bet is getting it all onto a per unit basis. And, uh, and this is how we roll. All right. So I've calculated my base values. I'm going to I'm going to tuck this away over here. I'm going to put my impedance diagram back up because now I've got to basically create I'm going to calculate the ohms on some of these. Some of them like the transformer, they're already in a percent impedance. That's already in per unit. I I will only have to do a transformation of one of these transformers because this is a 300 kVA transformer. And what's my base? 1500. So the laws of per unit tell me I've got to get everything on a 1500 kVA base. So I'm going to have to change this impedance from a 300 kVA base to a 1500 kVA base. And I will show you how we will do that. And I'll tell you where I'm getting the equations as well. All right. So the first thing we'll do is we'll do the utility. Always do the hardest one first. Utility. Impedance. Now, what we know is we have 125,000 amps at an X to R ratio of eight. Why, why did I pick 
an X to R ratio of eight. Um, and, and, and you guys out there, some of the power engineers out there may say, you know, I don't use an X to R of eight for utility. I use something different. Well, let me go to my, uh, let me go to my utility. Uh, I don't have much there. Well, I'll tell you what, I, in our, in my, um, our application guide, Eden has a, has an application guide that, uh, let me throw this up over here. And I will see me and monitor one. So this is, uh, this is what I call our consulting application guide. And there's a power distribution system section in here. And I don't want to get you all dizzy, but I'm going to. We have some good uh, rules of thumb. And one of the rules of thumb is looking at the impedance of, remember, I'm, look, I'm talking Thevenin and equivalent, and I'm looking at the impedance looking up to uh, the utility. So I've got to get the utility impedance. Usually they'll give you an X to R value. I mean, they will. They'll tell you what the available fault current is, and they'll give you an X to R value. But if you're trying to do things, for example, uh, before you even talk to the utility and you just want to get into the ballpark, then there's a little table in here. Uh, there is a, there we go. Typical X to R ratios. There we go. Typical X to R ratios for estimating purposes. So uh, this is for a system. So if you have remote generation through other types of circuits, it's either, a, it's 15 or less. I used eight, um, 15, 10 MVA or smaller for each three phase bank transmission lines, distribution feeders. They'll tell you for remote generation uh, connected through transformers rated uh, 10 MVA, and they'll give you these values. Um, what's nice about, um, what is nice about when you're doing, uh, using SKM is you can very easily change numbers and, and run them. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm starting with an X to R of eight and 125,000, making an assumption that's what the utility gave me. And what I'm going to use is an equation out of my Beeman handbook from 19, 1955, first edition, Industrial Power Systems Handbook. Donald Beeman was the editor. And I think if you look at each of the, um, each of the, uh, section or authors there's a bunch of authors each of the chapters i mean there's there's just i mean you've got kaufman in here you've got um uh you've got who where, where was it you got kaufman you've got uh, and there were some other big names in here too cook i mean these guys wrote books that i've got uh, anyway so i'm going to take this and what this what's nice in this book and it's on page 38 of my book it says, if given in short circuit amps, convert to per unit ohms thusly. I'm not going to do the derivation. I don't have time to do the derivation. I'm just going to do this, and maybe another day I'll derive this based upon the, 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 the say, based upon per, per unit stuff. All right, so what we do is we say KVA base. Divided by I short circuit. I think there's a square root of three in there. Yep. Square root of three and KV. All right. Make sure it says KV rating of the system. All right. So that's our equation. I'm going to put this down here. I've got a mess of books under here because, because if, if it gets too hard and we don't have numbers that match, we're going to have to go back and figure this out. So anyway. KVA base is 1,500, right? So we said KVA base is 1,500. We said the I short circuit is 125,000 amps. Square root of three is the square root of three. And KV is 4.16, right? Piece of cake. 1,500. One, two, five, zero, 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 divide. Three square root divide 
4.16 divide, 0 0.0017, 0 0.0017. Now, we said the x to r is eight. What I need to do is figure out my angle. And so my angle is gonna be the inverse tangent of eight, right? Because the inverse tangent of x to r is the angle, theta. Uh, and that is, uh, <laughs> I had my equations wrong. If you were looking at my pre-work, um, remember the, um, remember the power triangle. And that's uh, theta. This is x, this is r, and that is z. What I have calculated here is z. Okay, z is the hypotenuse. If I just use z and not the angle and didn't break it out into real and reactive, my, I mean, just look, the length of that is longer than any one of these two. So my calculations, if I just based it on z without an angle, my calculations would be too low of available fault current. Why? Because my impedance is larger than what it is. So what I have to do and in complex variables, I would say z is equal to r plus jx. Uh, we call that, we call that, um, it's not polar coordinates, rectangular coordinates. So I'm giving you, again, it's a vector z, and I'm giving you its coordinates. To get to this endpoint here, I have to go over r, I have to come up x, right? So um, that is what we call our just said it. Our our um not polar coordinates are whatever coordinates. So so over r and up x. Now the other way to represent z is by a magnitude and an angle. And to do that, I just have to figure out what theta is. And remember what theta, if I know x and I know r, inverse tangent of x over r is equal to theta. And then I can say z, and the magnitude of z, which how do I know what z is based on this triangle? z is equal to r squared plus x squared Square root of that, right? Rectangular, thanks, Ron. Jeez, rectangular coordinates. So this is rectangular. And, and by saying, representing Z as the magnitude Z at an angle of theta is what we call polar coordinates. Uh, but... Uh, I like to use the term phaser. Achoo! So uh, to get my magnitude of Z, it's you know the square root of the R squared plus X squared. I mean, this is, uh, this is trigonometry. And then uh, I can represent Z in polar. Now, there's a reason why you would want to represent it in polar format when you're multiplying or dividing. Uh, the Pythagorean theorem, uh, it'll work, uh, you know. Um, if this is a right angle, this is a triangle, right angle triangle. So, uh, you know, we use this same triangle. I know when I was on the job sites, we would uh, figure a right angle, three, four, five, right? Your three, four, five triangle. Uh, so that would give me my, my right angles. Uh, so this is definitely a right angle right here. This is my R, that's my X, and that's my Z. All right, so that uh, is important because in because this is going to you know your cosine functions your sine functions your tangent functions what's tangent tangent is opposite over adjacent so inverse tangent of that gives me my um gives me my theta so back to this tan negative one so eight inverse tangent is 82 0.875, and we'll call it 82.88. So 
So Z is equal to 0 0.0017 at an angle of 82.88 degrees. And that is my per unit value. And where are we going to put that? That number is going to go right here. 0 0.0017 at an angle of 82.88 degrees. That's the first part of my impedance diagram. Now, hopefully that all, I know I'm going a little fast, but you can always pause it. You can do it. Three, four, five triangle. Absolutely. Okay, so next is the conductors. Uh, since we are figuring unit impedance, does the use of the polar variables make it easier to break down into R and X? So here's, let, let me just do a, um, I, I, I got to make sure I don't mix these up. So this is good work. This is talking paper. <laughs> and this is my base value. So I got to make sure I keep these things. Let's talk about two triangles. Let's say that I have um, Z equals uh, four plus J 10 and Z equals uh, seven plus J 11. Okay, and I'm gonna add these together. So what am I doing? The very first one, I have a triangle like this, four and 10. And then the next one, I wanna add seven, and 11, and I wanna get that, and I wanna get that. Along the bottom is four plus seven, so this is 11. This side here, that's 11. This side here is 11 plus what, 10? This guy and that guy, 21. So if I wanted to add those two together, I would say my new triangle is 21 by 11. And what's the hypotenuse? Hypotenuse is 21 squared and 11 squared. Add those two and do the square root, 23.7. Okay, piece of cake. Now, what if I wanna multiply? I wanna multiply those two together, four plus J10 times seven plus J11. If I'm not using polar coordinates, here's how I would have to do it. I would take four times seven plus four times J11 plus J10 times seven plus J10 times J11 and on and on, right? So I'm taking the four times seven, four times J11. J10 times seven, seven J10 times J11. And then you have to understand that J times J, the imaginary numbers, J times J is a negative one. So then you, you, if you're doing a J squared, so J squared is a negative one, you would have to do your math, add them all together. And it's very long and complicated. But if I take four plus J10 and put that into polar coordinates, say it's a, uh, so four squared, and then 10 squared plus square root, that's 10.7703, 10.77 at, 10 divided by 4, inverse tangent, 68.19. And I do the same thing for this, 7 plus J11, 7 squared, 11 squared, plus square root. That would be 13.04 at an angle of 11 divided by 7. Inverse tangent, 57.5 degrees. If I want to multiply these two numbers together, 
if I put them into polar formats, I take 10.77 times 13.04 at an angle of 68.19 plus 57.5, and I'm done. If I want to divide these two numbers, if I want to divide, if I want to take 4 plus J10 and divide it by 7 plus J11, I would do 10.77 divided by 13.04 at an angle of 68.19 minus 57.5. And that would give me my new triangle. And then I could convert that back into rectangular format and I'm, I've effectively added uh, complex numbers together. And that's basically the theory or the mathematical process of complex variables. If you, ever, if you ever take a power engineering course, you'll have to take complex variables. That's the stuff they teach you. They teach you about that imaginary operator, the, the squaring it, all that other good stuff. So what we're, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the impedances of each of our components, and we're going to put them in polar format. They're in rectangular format too, and I have a spreadsheet we can use to, to do the additions and show you the math. Uh, and I'll share that with everybody. Uh, but um, the, uh, the, the aspect of putting things into polar versus rectangular, if I'm adding, I'm putting it into rectangular. If I'm multiplying or dividing, I'm going to put it into polar format. So hopefully that all... And as we do the math, you'll see how we're using it. Okay, so where were we? Conductors. All right. So we've done this so far. Now we're going to go into conductor one. Now, how do we, what is conductor one? Conductor one, let me get another piece of paper. Conductor one. Conductor one is one 350 MCM copper in steel conduit. And the length of that puppy is 50 foot. So what we're going to do first is we got to figure out the, the resistance and impedance. And for that, we're going to use our code book. Now, um, depending upon the conductor, if you are, uh, and what I'm going to is table nine in chapter nine, table nine gives us the impedance values. Now, if you were doing like an industrial facility, you may have conductors that, um, are oddballs, right? Uh, I, I did one a while ago. It was, uh, this was many years ago. It was paper insulated lead conductor, PILC. That's not in this table. I went back to the manufacturer of that product and they gave me their resistance and impedance values per thousand foot and we made it happen. So if you look at chapter nine, table nine for a 350 uh, size, Remember, you have, uh, you have this table is a kilo, kilometers on the top, and then uh, ohms per 1,000 feet is on the bottom. So for a 350, we're going to say Z is equal to R plus JX. And we know that R, for 350, in steel, co steel conduit, Alternating current resistance is 0 0.039, 0 0.039 plus J. And then I look at uh, X sub L in the uh, still under steel conduit is 0 0.050, 0 0.050, and that is ohms per thousand foot. Don't forget that <laughs> because if you just take those numbers, uh, you will be, now bookmark that. If you've got your book open, I'm going to put my little one-line diagram in here because we're going to go back to that for every conductor to get the ohms. Okay, so I've got to get this A to an, 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 an impedance ohms for, uh, for the 50-foot run. And then I also have to get this onto the per unit uh, from a base perspective. Now, what's... Where is this conductor one is on the 4160 side of the business. And my Z base is 11.537. That's going to be an important number. So what I do to get this over to 50 foot, I have to take 50 divided by 1,000. That will take this resistance value 
and make it such that if I divide it by a thousand, that's per foot, multiply it by 50, it gives me 50 foot for resistance and impedance. The next thing I have to do is divide this by the base, which is 11.537. This is the magic of per unit. 11.537. What is that going to do? That is going to let me be able to just add this conductor one with conductor two with conductor three because I'm normalizing this value based upon per unit. It's a percentage of the of the of the base. And I have to multiply that 0.039 plus j 0 0.050. All right. Let's do this one first. Uh, 50, 1, 1, 2, 3, divide, 11.537 divide is 0 0.0043, 0, 0, 4, 3. Don't miss the zeros. We're going to be dealing with some very small numbers. It's J, 0 0.050. So I have to take 0 0.0043 times 0 0.0039, and then 0 0.0043 times 0 0.050. That's what I'm going to do next. 0 0.039, 0 0.0039 times. All right, so this is 1.69 times 10 to the negative fifth. Point, zero point, one, two, three, four, one, six, nine. So there's four zeros because it's 10 to the negative fifth. One, two, three, four, five. That's 1.69. And then 0 0.0043 times 0 0.050 is 0 0.0002. That's three zeros. Okay, that makes sense? All right. Okay, so... Um, let's make sure. And zero, 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 six. So I basically converted that over to ohms, and then I put that into per unit. Now let's get the, um, now we're going to get the magnitude polar coordinates. Point zero, 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 one, six, nine, enter, squared. 0 0.0002 squared, right? Square root of that. And this is 0 0.0002 at an angle of, I take, how do I do angle? Inverse tangent of x over r. 0 0.0002 divided by 0 0.0001169 divide. Inverse tangent, that's 85.17 degrees. Make sense? I hope. <laughs> you guys doing the, uh, you have wrong decimal value for a multiply. Should be 0 .0, 0 0.039 plus point J, point oh five zero. 0 0.039 plus j.050. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Ah, man. I do this. See, I'm, watch my zeros. Okay, 0 0.00. So, um, thank you. I knew there was, there had to have been some. That would seem too small of a number. Okay, so 0 .00. .00 good catch. Who was that? Daniel. Thank you, Dan. So, that would be 0 .0043 times 0 0.039. All right, there you go, 0 0.002 plus 0 0.043 times 0 0.050. 0 0.00, 0 0.0043 times 0 0.002. 0043.050.0002. Zero, 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 oh, man. Okay, so awesome. 
Now we got to put that into polar coordinates. So point, that's why I should have done this before. Point zero zero two squared, point zero zero two squared plus square root and zero point zero zero two eight at an angle of forty five degrees. Point zero zero two point zero zero two divide inverse tangent. 45 degrees. <sighs> All right. Point zero zero two. This just I'm just gonna do the math again because point zero zero four three times point zero three nine point zero 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 two. Jeez. Point zero 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 two. I'm going too fast. I'm doing my math again. Point zero zero four three times point oh five oh point zero 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 two. I left I left a zero out. Point zero zero four three times point oh three nine is point zero 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 two. And the same thing over there. So this works out to be 0 0.0002 squared, 0 0.0002 squared plus square root 0 0.0003 at an angle of 45. That is conductor one. I think conductor two will go easier. Again, you got to watch my, my zeros. So I go back to my impedance diagram. Okay, conductor one is 0 0.0003 at an angle of 45. And that's in per unit. All of these are in per unit. Right, and, I, and how did I get this to per unit? This base value, dividing the impedance by the base value, actual over base, puts it into per unit. So that's conductor one. I'm gonna keep this in case we screwed up. Now I gotta do conductor number two. Conductor two is I'm just gonna do all the conductors and then we'll do the transformers. Make sense? Because we're on a roll. We have five, 750 MCM, copper, steel, and the length of that, because it's on the, uh, I got 15 foot, all right? So we go back to the code book. Back to the code book. And what is 750 MCM resistance 0.021 J 0.048. Double check me. 750 steel conduit 0 0.021 resistance. 0.048 impedance, X, R and X. And remember, that is ohms per thousand foot. Okay, now I've got five conductors in parallel. So the first thing, I've got 15 foot. So what do I do? I take 15 over 1,000, right? That's my first number. My base value, where is this in the power system? Conductor two is on the 480 volt side. My Z base is 0 0.1536. One over 0 0.1536. And now I have five in parallel, so I have to divide all of that by five, and then multiply that by 0 0.021 plus J 0 0.048. Watch my zeros, watch my square root of threes for me. I need you, Bill, Shell, and all that good stuff. 
Here we go. What is uh, 15 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.015. 15 is 0 0.015. I have to divide that by 0 0.1536. 0 0.1536 divide. I got to divide that by 5. 0 0.0195. 0.195 times 0 0.021 plus J, 0 0.048. Okay, so 0 0.0195 times 0 0.021, 0 0.0195 times 0 0.048 gives me what? My per unit impedance for 15 foot of five conductors in parallel. Small numbers. So 0 0.0195 times 0 0.021 is 0 0.0004 plus J, 0 0.0195, 0 0.048 times 0 0.0009, 0 0.0009. Zero 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 the three zeros. We'll put that into polar coordinates. I'm gonna square 0 0.0009, ah, get a zero, 0 0.0004 squared, 0 0.0009 squared, add them, square root 0 0.0010. At an angle of 0 0.0009, Divide that by 0 0.0004, inverse tangent, 66.0375, so 66.04. Does that sound like a plan? Make sure I did that right. You guys checking my math? All right, so just do it again. 15, one, one, two, three, divide, point one, five, three, six, divide, five, divide, point oh, one, nine, five, point oh, two, one, times, point zero, 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 four, point zero, one, nine, five, point zero, four, eight, times 0 0.0009 looks right all right we're looking good so we've got our next number hey where's my c2 Conductor 2 is 0 0.0010 at an angle of 66.04. Now, this transformer is a 1500 kVA transformer. Um, so that, that transformer is a 1500 kVA transformer. It was 5.75% impedance at an X to R of 6.15. So let's do that transformer real quick. Do it here. T1, 1500 kVA, 5.75% at an X to R of 6.15 X over R. 5.75% to get that to the per unit. I do 0 0.0575 at an angle of inverse tangent of 6.15, 80.76. And T1 is done. Isn't that easy? Because it's already on per unit. It's already at my 1500 kVA base. If I, did it, if I had my base at any other value, I'd have to change that 0.0575. So let's put T1 in there. 0 0.0575 at an angle of 80.76. I'm loving it. All right, so that's conductor two. We did this. You know what we could do? We could calculate the fault current at A. 
to see if we're if our numbers are right. And you know what I'll do is I'll do that, and then we'll put it into SKM, and we'll see if at least it's right to A, and then um, uh, that's a good a good uh, place to to start just to see um, to see if uh, if we have uh, our numbers right. Right? Okay. So let's calculate the fault current at A, not including motor contribution. To do that, we draw a circuit. We already have a circuit, right? So we have, this is basically our circuit, and it's a Thevenin equivalent looking up from A. We have one per unit voltage, right? We have our utility Z, C1, T1, C2, I per unit. So I per unit is equal to one over, because voltage is one, one per unit. Because why? I'm at, uh, uh, I'm at actual over base. My 40, my actual at this location in the power system is four, uh, 480 volts is my actual. My base is 480 volts. 480 over 480 is one, so one per unit. So what I have to do is add 0 0.0017 at an, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna add these. Now, I'm going to add them into, into am I add them in polar coordinates? Um, you could break these down into real and reactive, which I could do that. Conductor one, conductor two. I'm not gonna, I, I, you know what, let's do it, let's do it. Let's do it. So I've got 0 0.0017, and here's how we, we take that into rectangular. 0 0.0017, 82.88 cosine times 0 0.0002, plus J, point zero zero one seven eighty two point eight eight sine, point zero zero one seven. Just make sure, conductor one. No, that was utility, utility. Yep, that was my utility. Yep, so that's the utility. Conductor one is 0 0.0003, 45 cosine times 0 0.0002, plus J, 0 0.0003, 45 sine times 0 0.0002, 0 0.0075, 80.76 cosine times 0 0.0092 plus J, 0 0.0575, 80.76 sine times 0 0.0568. And then this one, 0 0.0010, 66.04 cosine times is 0 0.0004 plus J, 0 0.0010 times the sine of 66.04 sine times 0 0.0009. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna check these numbers. Conductor one should be 0 0.0002, 0 0.0002, Conductor two should be 0 0.0004, 0 0.0009. Yep. And then uh, we did uh, utility. We never had it in rectangular, but we do now. So to get the total impedance, R's and X's, all of my R's. Let's do this. Is that better? My R's, 
0 0.0002, 0 0.0001, 0 0.0092, 0 0 0.0010. All my X's, 0 0.0017, 0 0.0002, 0 0.0568, 0 0.0009. Add them up. What am I doing? I'm adding my rectangular coordinates just like we did earlier. 0, 0, 0, 0002 plus 0, 0.0092 0, plus 0, 0.010 0, plus 0, 0.0196. And my J's. 0 0.0017, 0 0.0002 plus 0 0.0568 plus 0 0.0009 plus 0 0.0596. So my equivalent impedance for all of these in series is 0 0.0196 plus J 0 0.0596. Let's put that into polar coordinates. So I have to square those two. I have to take 0 0.0196 squared, 0 0.0596 squared, add them, square root is 0 0.0627 at an angle, 0 0.0596, divide that 0 0.0196, divide, inverse tangent, 71.8 degrees. So that's my impedance. 0 0.0627 at an angle of 71.8. Now, to calculate my per unit at bus A, Jake, barking. All right, so we have this. We have a seven and equivalent. That impedance is 0 0.0627 at an angle of 71.8 degrees. One volt. I is equal to one over 0 0.0627 at an angle of 71.8. Drum roll, please. 0.0627, 1 over 15.949 at an angle of negative 71.8. Why do I put a negative 71.8? Because 1 at an angle of 0. Zero minus, remember when we divide polar coordinates, I take zero minus the angle below. So this angle minus that angle is 71.8. So my I per unit is 15.949. Now, I gotta multiply that, find my numbers by my base, right? So my base is 1804 at bus A. My I base is 1804.22. So I actual is equal to 15.949 times 1804 at an angle of negative 71.8. Drum roll. 15.949. And that's 1804.22 times 28,775 amps. What do you think? You want to try it in SKM? Let's see what we get. All right, let's do it. We're going to check our numbers now. So we're going we're gonna to get away from the math. 
And now we're going to use uh, the software. So I already have a, uh, I already have it open. Whoop, I got to do this, me and monitor one. So I'm now in SKM and what I'm going to do is create our one line diagram. So let's create a utility and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I've got a utility. And what do I know about my utility? I know it's kind of small for you. I'm sorry, but uh, that's all I can do. I have uh, I short amps, 125,000 amps, and my X to R is eight. All right, so that's all I need to do for that. And now I'm going to put in a uh, conductor. I'm nervous because I'm either I mean I either screwed it up royally or <laughs> I nailed it. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. All right. So the conductor is um, 50 foot of 300 MCM. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the library and I'm going to grab IEEE. So what do you think that is? That's uh. So this is the primary of a transformer three conductor. Plus a ground, we'll do that. Three conductor plus a ground, number of conductors three. Cable size is um, 350 MCM, 350. And we have how many? One per conductor, and we have 50 foot. And now let's, now here's the other thing I'm gonna do is, is to make sure that we're accurate, I'm gonna come into, I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to unlink it from the library. I want to come into impedance and in this number here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not going to get any bigger. So my, my R and my X, I want them to be exactly the same as my conductor one from the NEC. They have 0.0378. I'm going to make it 0.039. And my X, I'm going to, they have it as 0.0373. I'm going to make it 0 0.05. 0 0.05. And why am I doing that? I'm doing that because I want to make sure that the numbers I used in my calculation from the National Electrical Code are exactly the same as what I'm putting in SKM so that I can see if my number's right. Um, now, that's, this, is, uh, this is my positive sequence because three-phase bolted fault. I'm not going to touch my zero sequence. We'll do that next time we get into our calculation. So that's cable one. All right, so that's cable one. And next, I have a transformer. I'm going to add a transformer my transformer. Oh boy. Drop it. And um, I'm gonna figure out where my one line diagram went. Oh, way over here. Okay. All right, so let me get, uh, let me get back into my A for, whoop, that's all I'm gonna get into this I'll just zoom into that there's my transformer now i'm going to uh i gotta put my data in right all right so we said this is going to be a 4160 a 480 4160 bus 480 volts on the secondary now i gotta put my transformer impedance in I'm going to use my percent Z and R. So my percent Z was 5.75. And my X to R ratio, I said, was 6.15. And we can have a debate and discussion on, are those the right ones? Uh, all right. So that brings my real and reactive. All right. Um, and that's my impedance. Okay. So that should be, uh, that should be my transformer. Now, my secondary... For my transformer, I have another conductor. Put that puppy in. And this one is five 750s. Okay, so I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to pick the same. I'll use my four conductor plus ground. Popper, magnetic, cable size. What is my cable size? 750. 750s. I got five of these puppies in, po in parallel. Not six five and i've got 15 foot okay now i'm going to go to impedance uh first i have to unlink it from the library 
I'm gonna go to impedance and I'm gonna change conductor two from the National Electrical Code was 0.021. So I'm gonna get rid of the six. They have a 0.0216 and it was 0.048 and they have 0.0445 and I'm gonna make it 0.048. Positive sequence. And I'm gonna close it. So that's my first conductor. Then I have a bus. No, I don't. Oh yeah, cable two. That's it, right? Yeah, cable two. Oh, I'm I'm in there. I'm there. So I gotta put a bus. I'm gonna put a bus and I'm gonna put this down. Now let's zoom all. Why is it going over there? Don't know. Okay, there's our system, right? Uh we just this is our system. Let's just make sure. Let's just make sure I got what I we got the utility cable transform. Oh, uh, here's what I do: run data block format. I have my own data block format. One line. I go to TD one line. Apply. Close. Okay, so here's what I got. Uh, there's my conductor one. There's my transformer. I've got to separate some things. Move that down. I'll move my conductor. All right, so I got 750 KC mil. Um, I've got, or MCM, whatever you want to call it, whatever your flavor is. There's my 5.75. Let's run the study. Run. Run, Forrest, run. Okay, run, short circuit. Now, uh, I can do either a comprehensive or an ANSI. I'm going to do ANSI because comprehensive, we'll run the comprehensive and show you the difference, but... Uh, and, and this was in my predecessor, in my uh, other program I did, uh, just the precursor to this. I explained uh, this is using all of the ANSI process rules of thumbs. I got one fatal error. Transformer nominal KVA not defined. So I got to go back to this. 4160 volts. Oh, KVA. 1500. All right. So 1500 KVA. I'm nervous. 1500 KVA. All right, so let's run it again. Run, balance system study, ANSI, short circuit, run, zero. Okay, well, boy, what was our number? 28,775, I got 29,872. 29,872, let's just zoom in on that. So there's my number. 29872 and I did 28770 29872 28775 minus that's a thousand amps it should not be that much what did we do wrong let's look at conductor I feel good with conductor one. I don't feel good with conductor two. How long is conductor two? Conductor two is... Here's conductor one. Conductor two is this one here, right? I have 15 feet. I got 15 feet. I have five in parallel, five in parallel. What's my impedance? 0 0.021, 0 0.048. Something doesn't smell right. I shouldn't be a thousand amps off. So let's do it again. 15 over a thousand. 0.1536 divide, five divide. 0 0.0195, 0 0.02. 1, 0 0.021 times is 0 0.0004, 0 0.0195, 0 0.0045 and 0 0.048 times 0 All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do it by angle. 15 over a thousand. Five divide, 0.00, let's do this. 
I'm going to do conductor three again, or conductor two again. I felt comfortable in the other ones. For some reason, I just don't feel... I, don't, I feel like we did something wrong on conductor... Ooh, almost spilled my coffee. I'm going to do conductor two again, trial two. Conductor two. Five, 750 at 15 foot. So <clears throat> we have 0 0.021 plus J 0 0.048. I take uh, 15 over 1,000 times 1 over 5. 0 0.021 plus J 0 0.048. Okay, 15, 1,000 divide, 5 divide is 0 0.003, 0 0.003 times 0 0.021 plus J 0 0.048, 0 0.003 times 0 0.021, 0 0.001 plus J 0 0.003, 0.048 times 0 0.001. Whoop. Zero one. Three zeros. Do the first one again. 0 0.003 times 0 0.021 times 0 0.0001. All right. Okay. So if I take, uh, I do the, if I put that into rectangular format, up. Oh, Sorry about that. If I do this into rectangular format, so I, I just, I'm redoing this, right? So if I do uh, 0 0.0001 squared plus 0 0.0001 squared plus square root, I get 0 0.0001 at an angle of 45. I mean, it comes out this, I, I, I just don't like that angle of 45, but I mean, that's what it is. So uh, point, now I have to divide that by my base. And remember, my base is what? What's my base? It's all about the base. 0.1536. So I divide that by 0 0.1536. 0 0.1536 divide is 0 0.0008. 0 0.0008 at an angle of 45. And what's the rectangular coordinates of that? Uh, 45 cosine times is 0 0.0005 plus J. 45 sine 0 0.0006. Okay, so... Moving that over here. Where's my... This is where I was summing everything, right? We have 0 0.002. All right. Well, look, 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 look. I did have something wrong. I don't know what I did wrong, but those two numbers are not right. 0 0.0005. Five. Let's do this. Let me get my impedance diagram. Point zero 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 four. That should be point zero 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 five plus J point zero 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 six. I was off. I don't know why. I don't know what I did wrong, but I did something wrong there. Okay, so now let's add them up. Uh, this back up here. Moving papers all over the place. Let's do it again. 0 0.0002, 0 0.0002, 0 0.0092, 0 0.0005. That is 0 0.0101 plus J. Point zero zero one seven. Point zero 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 two. 
0 0.0568. And then that has to be point zero 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 six point zero five nine three. Let's convert that point oh one oh one squared point zero five nine three squared plus square root point zero six zero two at an angle of point oh five nine three point oh one oh one divide inverse tangent eighty point three three degrees all right so looking for my papers looking for my papers where I did the calculation here it is all right, so my new number is not 0.0627, it's 0 0.0602 at an angle of 80.33. All right, and that works out to be 0 0.0602, one over. 16.6113, 16.6113. You think that's going to give me a thousand amps? Times 1804, 1804 times 29,966. What was our number over here? Take a look. Ooh, oh baby. Yes. All right. Me and monitor one. Right, so we found our error in conductor number two, and uh, we calculated 29,966, and SKM calculates 29,872. So 29,966 minus 29,872 is 94 amps, and that is round off error. Okay. I feel better now. Hey, gum it. All right. So, you feel good? I feel good. Okay, so now we're back to our impedance diagram and we did our correction. I wrote on my shirt 0 0.0005 and 0 0.0006. We're going to do conductors three. Transformer two is going to be tricky because we got to convert that impedance to a different base. I'm feeling good. And then we're going to do the motor. Whew. All right. Boy, I'll tell you what. When you're live and you've not practiced, um, you're either going to make a big fool of yourself or you're going to be a rock star like I was. All right. Okay. This is talking paper. Conductor. So we have, uh, I've got, uh, I got my one line with my base values. This was uh, talking paper. This is my new conductor two. This is my conductor one. This is my utility impedance. Uh, my transformer was where? My transformer was on this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to uh, do that. And you know what I'll do? I will, PDF these and put them with the uh, with this presentation uh, with this discussion on uh, on my YouTube channel. All right, Mr. Smith, James Smith is in the house. Thanks for joining, brother. Okay, so we got utility C1, T1, C2. We got I feel good about those per unit values. We know how to put that. This is talking paper. I got to make sure I get my stuff in order here. All right, so. C3, C3, what is conductor, I'm not going to use pink, pink is for, pink is for error, black is for non-error, conductor, three, 
What is conductor three? That is two, three aught, copper, steel, and we are 175 feet. National Electrical Code. Remember, Table 9, National Electrical Code. Table 9, we got 3 odd conductor. My resistance is, boy, my eyes are getting bad. 0 0.079. So Z, 0 0.079 plus J. In steel, 0 0.052. 0 0.052. Ohms per thousand foot, right? Done with the book. All right. Yes. All right. Now, what's our equation? We have 175 feet. So we have 175 divided by 1,000. And we have uh, two conductors in parallel. So it's 1 over 2. This will give me ohms. 0 0.079 plus J. 0.052. Capish? So, get our calculator. Zero that sucker out. 175 over a th uh, divided by a thousand. Divide that by two. 0 0.0875. Times 0 0.079 plus J. 0 0.052 and and it's important to not lose those zeros um now i'm going to do 0 0.0875 times this and then 0 0.0875 times that 0 0.079 times 0 0.0069 0 0.0069 plus j 0 0.0875 times 0 0.052 is 0 0.0046. Now, what did I just do? I got it to ohms, right? So um, I've got to get it to per unit. What I'm going to do first is, um, I could do this, I can do it now. So uh, rem now, where is conductor number three? Conductor number three is still on the 480 volt side of the business. So my base is 0.1536. You gotta keep your bases. It's all about the base, 0 0.1536. 0 0.1536. Point 0.0069, point 0.1536 divide. Four, Point zero zero six nine point one five three six divide zero point zero four four nine point zero zero four six point one five three six divide zero two nine nine. Now we're going to put that in polar. 0 0.0299 squared, 0 0.0449 squared, plus square root 0 0.0539. Now that's the hypotenuse of that triangle. Now I have to do an inverse tangent calculation. 0 0.0299, 0 0.0449, divide, inverse tangent. 33.66. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. I need to, that's my, that's my per unit value, right? So I, I, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, well, that's okay. Um, let's put this here. This is C3. 0 0.0539, 0 0.0539 at an angle of 33.66. And my real is 0 0.0449 plus J 
0.0299. You guys following? Everybody following? I'm just looking. Um, I'm just, I'm just looking. Z total. There we go. So we got uh, we got some people doing math. Excellent. 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 Ahmed, thank you very much. Tim Croucher was in the phone. Primary cable seems a little heavy for a 1500 kVA transformer. I, I, yeah, you know, Tim, um, uh, we could, I, I'm, and what I think I'm going to do in a separate program is I'm going to look at picking the right conductors. I just went to a ballpark. I didn't put much thought into it because I needed to get it out really quick. So I just picked a, a, a conductor that I thought was ballpark figure. Uh, it is probably is a little high, a little heavy. Uh, and, 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 you know, five, seven fifties might be a little heavy. I don't know. You guys may have a better way to do that. Um, so anyway, there's our conductor three transformer two. Now this is, um, this is going to be, um, an interesting, so I feel good about conductor three. I'm going to put this into the, into the, into the pad. Now we have transformer two. All right, what do we know about Transformer 2? Transformer 2. We know it is a 300 kVA. 300 kVA transformer. Uh, 480, 208. The percent Z is 4.16. And the X to R is 6.15. Now, Tim, uh, Mr. Crowshore, uh, the other thing you got to think about too is, am, am I using the right X to R ratios? Did I hit the right number for the utility? It would be great to have, actually have a real X to R ratio from a utility. I think that would be, uh, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, to, you know, I, I probably should like, but look, look back through a, another study that I've done in the past. And, but you know, most of those, I just, I either threw them away or they're in someone else's library. So here's the thing with this one. That 4.16% impedance is based on a 300 kVA base. What's our base? It's 1,500. So I can't just put 4.16% at the angle. I have to convert this 4.16 from a 300 kVA base to a 1500 kVA base. How do I do that? Well, I, in my little slide deck here, I have per unit, so PowerPoint. All right, so these are some equations that 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 uh, that you'll need. I mean, per unit is actual over base. We already talked about that. Uh, we talked about the calculating I base, right? So it's uh, kVA times the square root of three divided by square root of, divided by three over kV base. We already did that. We already calculated Z base. We calculated I base uh, in these three zones. Remember, so uh, we did that. Now, what I got to do is this is another very important equation. Per unit two. So if I'm changing per unit values, I can use this. Uh, if, I'm, if I have an impedance that's on a different KVA base, the um, motor, remember the motor. The motor is a 300 horsepower motor, which I'm just going to say 300 horsepower equals 300 KVA. But that 300 is different than a 1500, but also that 300 horsepower motor is 460 volts, which is not our 480 volts. So that's why we have the KV1 over KV2 squared. So we're gonna use this equation and I'll, I'll even throw the KVs in there because it's 480 over 480, so it's one. So I'm gonna leave that over here and I'm gonna take us back to my paper. And we're gonna get this transformer pedance on a 1500 KVA base. So KVA base two is equal to my, my 300 times 1500 over, no, scratch that. KVA, not KVA, what am I doing KVA base? 
z base 2 is equal to 0 0.0416. It's your percent impedance on the 300 kVA base times 1500 over 300. And if I wanted to throw the voltage in there, it's 480 over 480 squared, which is one, right? Because the, 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 the transformer secondary is 480, and that's my base voltage at that value. So all I'm worried about is 1500 over three. So I got to take that 0.0416 times 1500, 0 0.0416 times 1500, divided by 300, point two zero eight point two zero eight I, I, I check my math do you know you know doing math is like uh working on uh in the garage on on uh woodworking measure twice cut once so point zero four one six times fifteen hundred divided by three hundred point two zero eight so I feel good about that What's my X to R is 6.15, 6.15 inverse tangent, 80.76, 80.76. Now, if I wanna put that in rectangular format, it's uh, 0 0.208 times cosine of 80.76 plus J, 0 0.208 times the sine of 80.76. So 0 0.208, 80.76 cosine, multiply that as 0 0.0334, 0 0.0334 plus J, 0 0.208, and I take 80.76 sine, 0 0.2053. And he's doing it. Ahmed, thank you. 0 0.208 at an angle of 80. Yes, doing the math. I got, I, you guys are awesome. And I got cold coffee now. All right, so uh, how do we feel about this? We feel good? I feel good. So let's put it on our per unit. T2. T2 is 0 0.208 at an angle of 80.76 or 0 0.0334 plus J, 0 0.2053. That looked good. And we got one more conductor and then we'll do the motor. C4, not the explosive. All right, conductor four. My impedance diagram is coming along great. All right, conductor four. What time is it? 6.42, five. Man, we're going to get this done in two hours, hopefully. Conductor four is what? I got to go back to my PowerPoint. Conductor four is two. Two six hundreds uh, copper in steel, and it's uh, fifteen foot. Okay, so back to the code. Back to the um, National Electrical Code. We're going to get our our, our impedance values. I got six hundred MCM uh, point zero two five resistance. Zero two five plus J point zero four eight. Okay, we good. All right, we have one hundred thirty seven people. Woo, love it. Or uh, whatever, one hundred thirty seven playbacks. <laughs> All right, so ohms per thousand foot. Okay, so now we got to do got to do our math. We have two of these, so we have 15 foot. So what do we do? We take 15 over 1,000, and we have two of them. And what does that equal? 15 over 1,000. 
and two divide, 0 0.0075. times 0 0.025 plus j 0 0.048 is equal to, now we have to do the multiplication, that times that, that times that, 0 0.025 times 0 0.0002, 2 plus j 0 0.0075 times 0 0.048, 0 0.0004, Four, and that is ohms. Now, where is conductor four? I'm getting rid of the book. Where is conductor four? Conductor four is on the secondary of T2. Z base is 0 0.0288, not the 0.1536. You always have to remember, use the right base. 0 0.0288. So I have to take this 0 0.0288 divided by the right number. So what do we got? Oh, oh, 0 0.002. 0 0.0288 divide. 0 0.0694. I gotta do the same thing, 0 0.0004, 0 0.0288 divide, 0 0.0139. And that is per unit. Right? Now we gotta convert that into our polar, 0 0.0694 squared, 0 0.0139. 39 squared add square root when 0, 0708 0, 0708 at an angle 0 0.0139 0 0.0694 divide inverse tangent I did something wrong Ahmed is doing it for us I'm showing his numbers Oh, he's got an extra zero in there. Hold on. 0 0.0002, 0 0.0288 divide. 0 0.0069. Oh, zero 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 0 0.0004, 0 0.0288 divide. 0.0139. Thank you, Ahmed. You're the, you're the man. All right, so um, 0 0.00694 squared, 0 0.0139 squared, plus square root 0 0.0155. Does that look better? Zero, 0.1 at an angle 0 0.0139 divided by 0 0.00694 divide inverse tangent 63.47 degrees. Okay. Now we got to put that on our impedance diagram and we are almost there. 0 0.0155 at an angle of 63.47 or 0 0.00694 plus J 0 0.0139. All right. I'm feeling good. I don't know about you. I'm feeling good. So I got to put these in order. I got conductor one, conductor two, transformer one, conductor three, conductor four, transformer two. I've got our base and I've got our utility impedance. All right, now 
I'm going to uh, going to do our final calculation. And here's what I'm going to do. Um, whoa, can't do that. All right. Thanks for hanging in. Why not use Z values at a degree? Uh, yes, I could do that. Uh, and my calculator will do it. The, the issue is what I'm trying to do by hand, I can't take polar coordinates like uh, 12 at an angle of 50 and add it to 13 at an angle of 60. The way you add is you have to break it down into real reactive. You can add the R's, add the X's. If you're using a calculator like this, I could enter um, the, uh, the magnitude at an angle and, and let the calculator do it. But I was just trying to do, uh, just trying to show and do it uh, with my R's and X's. So what I'm going to do is, let's do this. I'm going to take these, and I'm going to call this Z1. I'm going to call this Z2. And then I have Z motor. Whenever I do a calculation to include motor contribution, I'm going to take Z motor and Z1 in parallel with each other, and then add Z2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up real and reactive for Z1. I'm going to add up real and reactive for Z2. To get it without motor contributions, I add Z1 and Z2 and do the math. To do it with motor contribution, we're going to do that next. All right, so Z1. Uh, we'll do this. Z1. Point zero. Oh, we already did it. I left it. So, ah. Uh, Eh, we'll do it again. Point zero 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 two plus J point zero zero one seven point zero 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 two plus J point zero 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 two point zero five seven point zero zero nine two plus J point zero five six eight and then point zero 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 five plus J point zero 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 six Z one and I know we did it already but I for the life of me I don't have it point zero 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 two point zero 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 two point zero zero nine two point zero 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 five 0.0101. I remember that number. 0 0.0001.0007.0002.0568.0006.0593. That's Z1. Z2. Z2 is 0 0.0449 plus J 0 0.0299 0 0.0334 plus J 0 0.2053 and then 0 0.0694 plus J 0 0.0139 point four four nine point zero point zero four four nine point zero three three four point zero zero six nine four and zero eight five two Point zero two nine nine point two zero five three point zero one three nine point two four nine one two four nine one. Okay, we're almost there. So now for me to get it without motor contribution, I'm gonna take boy. It's my last one here, so I'm going to take, uh, I don't have any more white paper, but I'm going to have to use lined paper. So
So uh, Z total is equal to point zero one zero one point zero eight five two plus zero point zero nine five three point zero two four nine one point zero five nine three Nope, point two four nine one point zero five nine three point three oh eight four. I have a feeling that my transformer impedance is wrong. That's utility, that's this. Transformer 0 0.0575.0575.80.76 sine times 0 0.0568. Yeah, that's right. All right. Okay, so there's my Z total. Uh, rectangular format. I'm just going to do it real quick. I'm going to do a uh, no, I'm looking. I'm point oh nine five three I point three zero eight four, and that is zero point three zero point three two two eight at an angle of seventy two point eight three, and I just used my polar coordinates on uh, on my transformer on on my calculator. So that's my Z total. What is I? If that's my Z total, I total is equal to, um, remember I base. I base down here at B is 4163, so 0.58. So I take 4163.58. And basically divide that by uh, 0 0.3228. 4163.58.3228 divide 12,898 amps at an angle of a minus 72. Point eight three. All right, you ready for some SKM? We're gonna come. We're gonna check our answers. So that's that. That's this. That's the number we want to see. If we're right, and if we are, we're gonna do the motor next. Okay, so let's go back to our. Um, go back to this, right? So off of this uh, bus. So there's our cable two off of this bus. I've got another cable, right? And I'm going to make this a. Um, I'm gonna go to the library. I'm gonna pick this same thing here. I'm going to go to a. We said that that was a uh, three aught. Three aught, and we had two in parallel, and it was 175 feet. Okay, 175, now let's go to the impedance. I'm going to uncheck this. I want the numbers to be exactly the same. For conductor three, conductor one, two, I'm missing conductor three. Here it is. Conductor three has a point, this has point oh eight oh five. The code says 0 0.079, and then X is 0 0.052. So instead of 0 0.0519, I'm going to put 052. So there's my conductor. All right, so that conductor is right. And then after conductor 3, I have a transformer. Move this down. I'm going to add a transformer. 
Transformer is 300 KVA, 480 to 208, 208. All right, and uh, impedance, percent Z and R, and we said it was 4.16, and the X to R ratio we said was 6.15, right? Yeah, I have it the same. All right, 6.15, okay, and we do that, and I'm gonna close out of that, and then we have another conductor, got another conductor, and this will be cable four. Cable four is two 600 MCMs. I'll just drop this in. Uh, cable size, two 600s. I have two in parallel and I have 15 feet, right? 15 foot. I'm going to uncheck the library. I'm gonna to go to this. Now my resistance for conductor four was, 0.025, I'll take that seven out, and then the uh, 0.048. So instead of 0.0463, I'm a 0.048. So there's my conductor. I got my length, and I'm gonna close that, and I'm gonna put a bus, and this will be my last bus. All right, so let's take a look overall. Zoom all. There's my one line diagram. I have my utility cable always down. I got a cable transformer. Let's run it. Run, balance, study, run. Run, force, run. All right, then I'm gonna zoom. Okay, you ready? 12,958. What did we have? 12,898. 12,958 minus 12,898. 60 amp difference. Now that's the cow's meow. All right. All right. So I got um, feeling confident. Feeling confident here. All right. So, um, so I cannot believe that actually came out that good. All right, I'm feeling good. All right, so, so now we know we have a good impedance diagram, right? We gotta do the motor. And uh, we're gonna use the same equation that we did before. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the motor right on here. So what do we know about the motor? We know the motor is a 300 KVA, I'm just using KVA, at 460 volts. Now remember the equation that we had, Z nu is equal to, and the impedance of that is um, 0.15, 0 0.15 times 1500 divided by 300, and then I have to do, 460 squared divided by 480 squared. Okay, calculator. 0 0.15, 1500 times 300 divide. 460 squared times 480 squared divide 0.6888. 6888. Eight, eight. And the angle, the X to R of that motor was 4.9. So I'm going to do an inverse tangent, 4.9 inverse tangent, 78.465. So 78.47. Woo! All right. Okay. Oh, oh. sorry about that. Sorry. Um, I didn't have the, I just, thanks, Mr. Uh, Felix Sandoval. I knew you were out there, brother. Thanks for keeping me honest. Thanks for sticking in there, Tim. Okay, so um, what I did here, I took 300 KVA at 460. I'm taking my equation. Remember, it's 
it's the old times the new over the old, and then the voltage is just the opposite. It's the old voltage squared over the new voltage squared, okay? And then I take my 5, 0.15 times 1500 times 460 squared, divide that by 300, divide that by 480, and I get 0.6888. And to get the, um, to get the 78.47, remember my motor, if you uh, recall, uh, the motor over here is, uh, is 300 horsepower at 15 per unit. That's my 15. It's not in percent. If I was going to say at 15% impedance, I don't have to divide that by 100 because it's in per unit already, 0.15. Uh, and maybe uh, next Thursday, I'll talk about why, you know, what, what I usually use 0.25. That's what I usually use for that. I don't know why I used 0 0.15. 0 0.15 you would use for a synchronous motor. This is an induction motor. Um, so I, I should have used 0.25, but I used 0.15, big deal. Uh, we can play with that. 4.9 X to R ratio, uh, but it's at 460 volts. So, so I had to take the 0.15 off of the 460 volts and off of the 300. So I used that per unit equation. Uh, Z2 is equal to Z1 times KVA base 2 over KVA base 1 times the voltage base 2, voltage base 1 squared over voltage base 2 squared. So these are just inversed. All right, so we got 0.688. Um, eight at an 878. So now uh, let's go back to our impedance diagram okay this motor this motor is I'm gonna do it sideways 0 0.688 at an angle of 78.47 I got to get that the rectangular 0. 0. 0.6888 78.47 cosine times 0. 0.1377 plus j 0. 0.688 78.47 sine times 0. 6741. Right, so that's my real reactive. So this turns out to be 0.1377 plus J.6741. All right, so that's your motor. Now, what, we, what I got to do now is, so I'm going to put this in here I've got to find that uh, remember our totals transformer conductor conductor there he is all right I'll put Z motor Z motor is point actually i'm not here's what i'm going to do i'm point six eight eight at an angle of 78.47 because what i got to do now is i have to multiply this times this divided by this plus this remember um if i have two if I have this, this is what I've got, okay? So I have um, my Z1, Z motor, Z2. So I have to do Z1 times Z motor divided by Z1 plus Z motor. That's my equivalent impedance of that. And then I have to add that to Z2. Now, to get that done, I'm going to have to um, 
do my multiplications in polar. So what I'm going to do for sake of, uh, for sake of time, I'm going to do 0.688 at an angle of 78.47. That's how you do it on this calculator. And then I have to put 0 0.0101 I 0 0.0593, and I have to multiply that. And that's 0 0.0414. So this top is 0.0414 at an angle of 158.8. Now I've got to do Z1 plus Z2, and I'm just going to do it. I'm going to let the calculator do the math. I mean, it's an exercise left to the student, right? 0.688. At an angle of 78.47, and then I'm going to add 0 0.0101i, 0 0.0593, and I'm going to do plus. And then the answer to that one is 0 0.748. At an angle of 78.62. So now I'm going to do the division. 0 0.0414 at an angle, or actually, division. 0 0.0414, 0 0.748 divide, 0 0.055 at an angle of 158.8, 78.62 minus. Ah. 158.8, 78.62 minus 80.18. All right, so that is the equivalent impedance of that. Now let's take a look. What did we say Z1 was? 0.0101 I.0593 is 0.06. 2 at an angle of 80.33. So by doing the, the combination, O five five at an angle of 80.18. So by doing that combination, I knocked Z1 down. Because remember, when you do things in parallel, you're going to approach the smaller of the two. So that's why putting a motor in parallel, when you add a motor, you're going to be reducing the impedance because you're going to take everything that you've added up, the transformers and everything. Now you're putting a, a motor in parallel with all of that. That big number is going to shrink down to something smaller than the impedance of the motor. And what was the impedance of the motor? Uh, we calculated 0 0.688, and we're and we're down to 0 0.055. Yeah, 0 0.688. So 0 0.055 at angle of 80. Now we're going to add that to this down here. Let's do this in in uh, polar. That one is um, 0 0.0852 i 0 0.2491. This is 0.2633 at an angle of 71.11. So what I'm going to do is add that to 0 0.055, 0 0.8, 0 0.055 at an angle of 80.18. Add my new Z total. with the motor is 0 0.3177 at an angle of 72.68. Now, there's my impedance without the motor. 
0.3228. When I added the motor, because I did them in parallel, I reduced the overall impedance to 3177. And what's that going to do my fault current? When my impedance goes down, my fault current goes up. So now to calculate my fault current, and where are we in the power system? We're going to be down here at Z base. Uh, I base is 4163. So we take 4163 divided by this new this new impedance of 3177. At an angle of 72.68. All right. Do the math. 4163. 0.3177 divide 13,104 at an angle of negative 72.68. You ready to throw the motor in on SKM? I got 13,104. I don't know if anybody's still out there, but if you are, God bless you. All right, so now here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna we're gonna we gotta throw the motor in, right? So the motor goes where? The motor goes right here. So let's put a motor in. Where's the motors? Motors, 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 right here. Okay. Now I have um, rated size 300 horsepower. I'm going to leave power factor of 0.8, efficiency at 0.93. Uh, I've got to go to the ANSI contribution. And I'm going to unlink this because my impedance is 0.15. They have a 0.1507. I'm going to make it 0.15. And my X to R is not 4.899. It's 4.9. Still awake. You're the man. All right, and then uh, that's my motor, and let's, um, you ready? Let's run a motor, let's run it. Balance study, run, no errors. Here we go. 13,137. We calculated SKM, 13,000. 13,137. It don't get no better than this. 13,137, 13,104, we are 33 amps off. Now that's smoking hot. All right. So what did we do? I'm going to... I'm going to take, I'm going to, I'll include both of these. All right, so. That's our impedance diagram. It has all of the impedance values on it. We successfully, what did we do? Let's just talk about what we did. We took an, a one-line diagram. We converted every component, any significant component, into an impedance. Next week, I will go over why I picked what values, especially for transformer. We'll talk about transformer impedances and X to R ratios, uh, motor impedances, and all that good stuff. Um, oh, uh, uh, James, uh, can you go over the angles for T2 and the motor? Yes, I can. Okay, um, let's just talk about T2. What was T2? Let's look at this. Um, remember, T2 was a 300 kVA transformer at 4.16% impedance, and, and the X to R ratio is 6.15. So what I did for the math, I'm just going to organize these. So what I did for the math was 
I remember I had to take the 4.16% impedance and convert that from a 300 kVA base to a 1500 kVA base. I didn't have to touch the voltage. So I had to take 4.16% impedance or 0.0416 times 1500 divided by 300 and get a new impedance for that transformer on the, on the 1500 kVA base. I don't have to do anything about the, the, uh, the X to R. The X to R doesn't change. The angle is the angle is the angle. So to get the angle of that transformer, I take the inverse tangent of 6.15, A tangent, and it's 80.76 degrees. So that's basically what I did for that, trans for that transformer. Now the motor is the same thing. I gave you 300 horsepower motor, a 0.15 per unit and an X to R ratio of 4.9. Now, um, since uh, since we're we're hanging in there, let's take a look at uh, motors. Uh, hold on, let me just minimize my SKM. Let's talk about that motor. There we go, motors, right? All right, so. Your motor contribution, I have to, I have to basically model that motor as a as an impedance, and it's a dynamic impedance. So the impedance of a motor will change the moment a short circuit occurs. It turns into a generator because it's got the back EMF. You've got the rotating fields going on. The inertia of that motor is going to keep moving, and then depending upon what you're driving, will tell you how long it's going to hang in there. But we represent different time periods for a motor based upon um, different reactance values. So we have uh, subtransient reactance, which is that first cycle. We have transient reactance, which is a time period after that. And um, then we have just the reactance, which would be the longer term. So the subtransient reactance is what we're looking for. Now, uh, if you look at some of the equations, subtransient reactance per unit, one over the locked rotor, right? So if you know the locked rotor multiple multiplier, these are ways for you to get to a subtransient reactance for a motor. IEEE uh, documents will help you with that. Um, good reference is the Red Book. Uh, my edition is 1986, and I love this book. Um, it's got some good information in there. But anyway, uh, one over the locked rotor multiplier or the locked rotor current over the rated current, because it's, remember, per unit is a percentage, right? Uh, rated KVA, these are the equations for all of that. Now, uh, if you look at IEC, IEEE standard C37.13, and this is for low voltage AC power circuit breakers used in enclosures, what they'll tell you is that, uh, Induction and synchronous motors connected to the bus act as generators. Obviously, I just said that. The field collapses. You're still rotating. The, um, at one half cycle after the short circuit occurs, they contribute current that may be calculated from the subtransient reactants. Now, uh, where, if you, uh, if, where the impedances for the installation are not known, you can assume induction motors contribute about 3.6 times their full load current. I use, and look, 3.6 times induction motors are at 3.6 times their full load current. Synchronous motors are at 4.8 times their full load current. So what, what you'll typically do is we'll lump motors together. We'll say if it's like a bunch of 50 horsepower motors, we'll just say, I've got, you know, 300 kVA of a group of 50, K, 50 uh, horsepower and less. And then we'll slap that on a bus. That's why I didn't put an impedance uh, in there. It, remember, we're getting into ballparks here, and there's guidance, and we'll talk about this next week about what are the rules of thumb when you don't have any data, you don't have, you haven't broken ground yet, so you haven't bought anything. So um, you will have to come up with what is the impedance that you're going to use. I usually use 0.25, which what's 0.25? One over 0.25 is four, four times the locked rotor amps, and it's right in between the 3.6 and four. Well, not right in between. 3.6 and 4.8. So for an induction motor, I'll typically use 25% uh, impedance or 0.25 uh, per unit. Uh, I don't know why I used 0.15. I just used 0.15. Uh, in any case, um, uh, there's some assumptions that you'll use for 50% lighting, 50% motor load, 
And again, depending upon the type of a building, if it's a commercial building versus an industrial building, that type of deal. Uh, and, and again, we'll go over this next week. But look, uh, unfused circuit breakers. So if you look at C37.13, C how we test a circuit breaker, we will configure a test circuit with a specific X to R ratio. What is X to R? Inverse tangent of X to R is theta, cosine of theta, power factor, right? So I'm basically establishing the power factor, which is the angles. So uh, let's just, well, I'll come back to this just to understand what are we talking about with regard to uh, uh, the angles. So if I'm looking at a sine wave and a voltage wave at 90% power factor, my current lags the voltage uh, by, by uh, uh, 25.84 uh, degrees, right? So my, I'll have my sine wave for my voltage and then my current. Now, as my power factor goes down, I'm seeing a separation between my voltage and current waveforms. And then you'll notice right around you 60% power factor, there's 50% power factor, and there is 25% power factor, and there is 15% power factor. This is where we test our breakers. Uh, and I believe uh, fuses are tested around 20% power factor. And why do we do that? We try to test at the worst case scenario. So this is an X to R ratio of 6.59, 6.6, which round it up. If you look at the peak of the AC sine wave for current is at its maximum when my voltage is crossing zero. That's pretty much the hardest part for a breaker or a fuse to interrupt because my voltage is almost zero and I'm at the maximum amount of current because of my phase relationship. So what we'll do is we'll say, you know, as your, as your, um, as your X to R goes up, there's numbers. So as my X to R ratio increases, my power factor is decreasing. My, my, um, my sine waves are moving. So what we'll say is that, you know, we test it at, uh, at a 6.6 .6 X to R ratio. Uh, but if you are going greater than that, then you are getting into an area where a breaker or fuse is not uh, tested for, or you have to derate. And we have, we have derating factors uh, uh, based upon that stuff. So here we go. So this is an example. Um, if your X to R range on a uh, mold decay circuit breaker uh, for a 10,000 amp interrupting rating and less, uh, your power factor test range is from 0.45 to 0.5. So there's your X to R test range. For uh, uh, interrupting ratings from 10 to 20, you're at up to 3.8. And there's your 6.6 .6, over 20,000, 6.6. .6. So depending, and, and what we do is we publish all of these. So low voltage power circuit breakers, 6.6. .6. So if it's a low voltage power circuit breaker, you're, you got to make sure that your X to R ratio doesn't go above that. Uh, if if you have a molded case circuit breaker, it depends upon the interrupting ratings. These are all uh, based upon the UL standards on how we test overcurrent protected devices, right? So uh, this understanding your XR, rarely do you have to worry about the XR ratio, um, but it's worth looking at until you get what my professor in, in college called it, moxie. When you can look at numbers and say, I know, that I'm, I'm okay, uh, based upon where I'm at in a power distribution system, you'll know if you're close to a very large transformer, a uh, high uh, thousand KVA or more, and you're very close to that, very limited uh, conductor run, you're gonna be pushing that high up. So any case, um, uh, all right, so that is, where that's at. And then here's, uh, again, for testing circuit breakers, all this other good, good stuff. So in any case, um, I don't wanna belabor that point, uh, but um, I think um, I think uh, basically, uh, hopefully uh, that helps uh, give you in the ballpark of where, uh, how we got the transformer, and then you have the transformer X to R, and we'll talk about this next week. It's been over two hours now. We're at uh, two and a half hours. 
so a lot of it was math. What I'll try to do is look at in in the uh, in my video afterwards, after it's produced and up there, I'll try to put some some time frames in there so that you can fast forward to whatever. So in any case, uh, oh, Don Gunier did it with FC squared twelve thousand eight hundred and fifty six. 12,856 as compared to 12,856 as compared to um, was Dawn, was that with the motor contribution or not? Oh, it's probably not, mo no motor contribution, 12,898. So uh, pretty doggone close, but given how Eaton's free app, okay, wait, hold on. I gotta look at some of the, some of the, the dialogue that's going on here. Uh, so SCAM should be paying you for showing everyone how easy their software does this job. That's true. Uh, but, but Don Ganier has a good point. We have FC squared, which is even easier. Um, so the challenge with all of that is, um, is, uh, is the, uh, the motor contribution. So Jim Smith, Mr. Smith. Yes, this is on my YouTube channel. So all of my content is up on my YouTube channel. I leave it up there. You can view it at any time that you want. Um, I will, I will, uh, PDF these here and I will put these up on a, on my, uh, Dropbox and I'll put a link to them underneath my YouTube video. So I will PDF these. And once this is up there, I'll put the times like where, you know, key points in the video so that you can go back and go straight to those times. Um, well, we did a lot this evening. In two and a half hours, we did a short circuit study by hand, and we confirmed those values in SKM. And Don, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Don Ganier out there did it in our Busman FC Squared app, which is downloadable from the web. Um, we did not do Infinite Bus, but I'll tell you to do. Here's here's what just you can do this yourself, and maybe send me an email on what you think. But to do an infinite bus calculation, just hide the, uh, the, ignore the utility impedance. That's all infinite bus is. Don't do the in utility impedance and do all the calculations. Do another calculation. Here's what you can do is on this, for the secondary of this transformer, just do, add these two together, divide and multiply that by our base values here, 4163, and that will be an infinite bus calculation for bus B based upon an infinite bus of transformer two. And maybe, maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, uh, we'll do that quick next week. Uh, but d you can do it on your own. Just, just take T2 and, and C4, add those together, do one over and multiply that by 4163. That will be an infinite, infinite bus calculation for bus B. And then compare that number with all of the work that we just did. And see what is the true difference, and uh, I, that would be a, that would be you know what they say. I leave that to the student. So we did a, we did a lot this evening, uh, and I appreciate everybody hanging in there. Uh, but uh, and you can watch this at any time. It'll be up there. You can go back over it, draw the one line diagram, do it yourself, and see if you can get the same numbers. The mistakes that I'm historically make that I'm historically make. Think about this. Some of the mistakes I made tonight. What did we do? We forgot about the zero, right? Instead of 0. 0.000 something, I did 0. 0.00 something. Um, so be very careful with the numbers. Be very careful with your decimal points. Uh, the square root of threes, be careful with the square root of threes. If I was on a test exam, uh, it, it, that's something that if you're in a hurry, like I sort of was this evening and I lost a couple zeros in there. So if you're on an, like a PE exam or whatnot, I know I had a similar question like this on a PE exam and I had to do my per unit. And when you're hurrying, you, you know, check your numbers twice, right? So, uh, and remember, you have three zones. You can't just do a KVA base and a voltage base and an I base and use that throughout. You've got to change your current and impedance and voltage base depending upon what sides of the transformers you're at. If you have a motor on, a, on an exam and the motor is at a different voltage and a different KVA, don't forget to convert that. It's not hard to do, but when you forget it, you forgot it and you will lose. So make sure that you 
uh, cross your T's and dot your I's. Mr. Abbasi, thanks a lot. I appreciate you you hanging in there as well. And Mr. Ganir, um, Sorab Al Al Mahose, I hope I got that right. Felix Sandoval, you are the man. Tim Crowshore, James Smith, you are the you Jim Smith, you were the instigator to this. You asked the question. I um I said, you know what, we're gonna do it. And I'm glad that we were able to just on the fly get this done with minimal impact and redo. So um Oh, we had some good people on board. Tim Crowshore, Joe Bellantoni. I don't know if he hung in there or not. Education Power. I, I know he has a class or something he does. Jack Ma, I think that he used 600 volt cables for the primary of transformer should be 15 kV. Oh, Jack, you are right. You are right. Ah, yes. And and you know what? We're gonna we're gonna look at that too. And then we have to look at what is the impedance that we use for those cables. Very good catch. Uh, but remember, this was an exercise in the math um, to get those done. I get those done. I'm showing all of Ahmed's uh, calculations. I really appreciate him doing that. Um, all right. Dan, D Daniel Lawrence, Bill Shell. All righty. Well, everybody, that's my program. I thanks for everybody dialing in, keep hanging in there to the end. Appreciate everything that you guys and gals do for electrical safety and for the electrical um, uh, electrical uh, industry. Philippines, we got uh, Jesus Santos. Thank you for joining us, Paul Costello. Thanks, Paul. Uh, share it with our apprentices. Beautiful. Now this is uh, uh, this is a lot of math. What I would do if I was doing um, an apprentice, I would have them do it via, you know, if it's an electrician, I don't know that they're going to get into per unit. I don't know if you want to get them into that. Use the Busman FC squared. I'll put a link to that down below as well. So Felix, maths are clearer now. Amen, Felix. So, uh, and I had my pens ready. I had a red one. I had a pink one for mistakes. I only had to use the pink one once. So... That's good stuff. I will PDF these. I will put these up. Thanks for joining in. And again, thanks for what you do for safety and electric and the electrical industry. Please stay safe and um, by all means, stay healthy. I'm going to tune out now. I'm done. I got to go upstairs. All right, everybody. Good night. Take care. God bless. Thanks for staying, hanging in there.